Hello and welcome to Think About It, where we have just two primary goals. One, to get you to think about it, and two, to just make more sense than Chris Matthews. We are living in a special era. We have at our disposal and at our service, not just a president, but apparently a deity. He has been elevated to that status by so many, it makes the questions that I have for him probably pretty easy to answer. So, if you don't mind, maybe you all can ride along with me as I approach the throne of Obama and ask five questions from a bald guy. Number one, when in your life did you first learn to ignore overwhelming public opinion? I mean, let's look at this health care debate. The percentage of people in the polls who are dead set against these plans is far greater than the percentage of people that elected you to office. Now, we were told that election was a mandate because of the scope of the people who voted for you. So, what's happened regarding health care when even more people are dead set against it? When did you learn to ignore them? Number two, how on earth can you hold a press conference? And by the way, nice touch having the white-coated doctors replacing the styrofoam Greek pillars. I, I love the way that flowed. How can you hold a press conference to talk about your plan and all of its wonderful offerings when your plan has never been written or scored by the Congressional Budget Office? Your plan doesn't exist yet. But all those doctors slash styrofoam pillars sure seem glad to hear it. Number three, why on earth? And this is just a question really for the Democrats, but I'm sure that Obama Messiah can answer this as well. Why on earth would any Democrat sacrifice his job security to bite the bullet for this thing? Is it because they know that there's 99 weeks of unemployment benefit waiting for them? But my friends, has nobody learned a lesson from the loss of the Kennedy seat? Is one vote from the other side considered bipartisan? There has not been a point at which any Democrat has been shown any loyalty or respect by this administration, and yet now they are all being asked to put their heads on the chopping block, knowing that, uh, that Obama and Pelosi and Reid will all be there for them when the rubber hits the road. My friends, the only reason that they're doing this is because the leaders, Pelosi, already knows that the freak shows in her district will elect her until the lights are turned out, and Reed knows he's already going down. So the leaders have their out already planned. Why would any other Democrat support this, knowing that in November they'll be out of work? Those 99 weeks of unemployment benefit kind of fly by when you have no other skills other than to suck off the public. Number four, wasn't it just like a couple weeks ago when we were told that there would now be a laser-like focus on jobs in this country? Has, has anybody seen the laser? It appears to have gone away, sacrificed in favor of this health care mess. Um, by the way, there were some statements made in 2007 by Mr. Obama Messiah talking about reconciliation and how ridiculously out of line it was to pass major policy initiatives based on reconciliation. So now what happens? Because we have learned, as you're surrounded by the white coats, that that's really the only way you can get this done. Hmm. Seems to be kind of a, a contradiction. Number five. Last question from the bone. Uh, your very capable and able spokesman, Robert Gibbs, said that this is the final push for health care. My question is, does that finally mean that once we stomp this down, that Obamacare will disappear permanently, we'll never have to hear of this garbage again? Because we're going to stomp it down. But when he said final, did he mean final as in final, or did he mean just kind of final in the same scope of meaning and sincerity that you talked about you know, never having heard anything Reverend Wright said in 20 years. Was it that kind of sincere? Or is it really about over? Because if this is the final push, what happens when the final vote is no? Hmm. 
Well, those are my questions, Mr. President, Mr. Messiah, and anybody else who's checking in. I would just encourage you to keep asking questions, my friends, calling your elected representatives. You can feel free to plagiarize the questions. Ask them what happens when the vote is no. Does this finally go away? Will there be a time when the will of the American people is finally respected? Think about it.